But I found out how they got that power because I see a, a orange extension cord. What? They the. I, I found out how they got their power. They they're connected to like an an outlet over here on the field, and it it runs up all the way the all the way to the stands. Really? Yeah. Old school. I'm going to call it right now. Giants will be the Browns' first victory oh, yeah. next weekend. The Browns are going to upset them the next weekend. I'm just not – I'm so unimpressed with what the Giants are doing, though I see their defense improve. Yeah, I love the news for Sean. The Browns might win their first game this, year, this week against the Steelers. Uh, Roethlisberger's night wow. against the Steelers, but they play so down to, to terrible opponents that they have a history under Mike Tomlin with to a the team. So – Fingers crossed for Sean, but if not this week, I guess next week Eli needs to, to get his head out straight before that Browns game. Uh, you know, I wasn't sure what to make of the NFC East heading into the season because there were so many questions. I, I sort of was leaning towards the Giants to win it by default. Uh, that we thought Ron was coming back, but we weren't sure, and then he got hurt. So Dak Prescott was, you know, suspect at the time. Was Kirk Cousins going to be like 2014 Kirk Cousins or 2015 Kirk Cousins? He's been a little bit of both. And we thought Sam Bradford was starting until about a week and a half before the season, and then Wentz got the role, uh, got the job, played well for uh, four or five weeks, and then sort of slipped since then. So I, I think the Giants have that going for them, that all that they sort of upheaval in the division. But you're right, they're, they're hard to get excited about when you watch them play. The inconsistency in offense is a concern. I know Beckham is playing better since he quit slapping, uh, kicking that. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. But you're just never sure what you want. Like. He's going to show up. And that's a big part of, of trying to be successful. Uh, that's the guy at the Super Bowl, so maybe uh, he just waits until January to start ramping things up. Ryan Wilson, CBS Sports NFL writer. I close up with a game that I like to play. I give you 100 bucks of my money, and I let you walk up to the window at the Bellagio Sportsbook. 
Right now, you get to pick the Super Bowl champ. You've gotten to see 10 weeks of action, nine weeks for some games. You get to bet that $100 on whatever selection of teams and whatever amount you want. How much are you putting on the Patriots? How much are you putting on Dallas? And are there other teams that potentially you'd want to put a couple of those dollars? Yeah, I'll put thirty five dollars on the Patriots, but I'm putting sixty five on Seattle. I love the fact that Russell Wilson's healthy because the first month or so he looked he was hobbled and he played like it and that team struggled. The defense is getting better. A dynamic Russell Wilson makes that offense dynamic. Uh Jimmy Griffin's coming along. They're gonna get Tom Charles back. Uh, I think they're gonna be a team to watch. They're six two. Wow. So it's you put thirty five on the thirty five on the real sixty five on yeah, Seattle. I'm all in on Pete and his, his khakis and his white sneakers. Wow. CBS Sports uh, covering the NFL. I wonder if Jay, Ber- Jay Berman's a, a, a sharp dressed man, good looking medium, or area. Three for ball. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the campus of Thomasville High School, home of the Thomasville Tigers. I'm Kyle Richardson, joined along with Levi Arrington, Ethan Barber, and our sideline reporter, Eric Velasquez. It's about a three-and-a-half-hour drive down here, but I think it's going to be worth it tonight. This is going to be a heavyweight matchup between two sets of Tigers, one from Roanoke, Alabama, and one from Thomasville. Both of them really good ball teams. Yeah, I do agree, Kyle. Both teams are very great. And like you said, it was a long drive down here. Both teams uh, both exiting the regular season 8-2. and two. So like you said, it is going to be a great ball game. Um, the teams that Thomasville lost to was Andalusia High School and – excuse me – and Jack, Jackson High School. Sorry, I lost, lost where I was looking right there. But they lost to Andalusia, which is also a 4A team that is very much the talk of 4A football. But um, on with this football game, uh, Hanley losing their first two games, and we broadcasted those games, Kyle Calloway and at Tallahassee. And um, they haven't lost since. So, like you said, it's going to be a great ball game. Excited to see what both the Tigers have in store for us tonight. And there's not really a low-quality loss in between either of the two teams. When you look at who they lost to, Hanley lost to Tallahassee. Well, they're in the quarterfinals playing against Andalusia tonight. Thomas will lost to Andalusia, but I just said they're in the quarterfinals playing, playing Tallahassee tonight, so we could see a rematch between any of those two teams. Hanley also lost to Callaway. Callaway undefeated, playing in the second round of the playoffs tonight, playing at home at Callaway Stadium at LaGrange College. Hopefully they'll pull out the win tonight. And another team Thomas will lost to, as you mentioned, Jackson. Jackson in Class 5A, top 10 Class 5A team. They're in the quarterfinals as well. Andalusia, the number one team in Class 4A and definitely kind of the top tier of football, of 4A football, is this region, 1A Region 3. And that consists of Thomasville, Andalusia, and UMS Wright. And speaking of UMS Wright, Hanley finally got uh, – 4A Region 1, excuse me. Hanley finally got the monkey off their back last week by going to UMS, going to Mobile, and taking down UMS Wright finally. They've been down there six times now. They have been successful twice. Yeah, that's that's not too great of a record, you know, but when you're playing against UMS, right, they've always had really talented players and they've always had great coaching staff. So it's hard to go down there to Mobile. It's such a long drive, and for the players, it can, you know, kind of lag on you a little bit. But also, you know, you, you saw a lot of difference in that ball game, Kyle. You know, uh, two field goals were kicked by number four, Hudson Burns, four uh, the Hanley Tigers, and that was the difference in the ball game. If he wouldn't have kicked those two field goals, it would have been a completely different ball game. Yeah, and the defense for Hanley last week, just spectacular. Just very good last week. They've been very good all season long. The whole second half of the season, they have been shutting the opposing teams down. They've got 13 points, 13 points, 14 points, 7 points to leads, 
49-7 in the first round of the playoffs, 20-14 to to a very potent UMS right team, 50-29 to to Clay Central, who is one of the best offenses in Class 5A. And Clay Central plays St. Paul's last week, which is another team from Mobile, another one of the private schools that can recruit down there. And St. Paul's beat Clay Central, which was a saddening thing to see because I really want to see Clay Central go far with their running back and how, how good he is. He is a fantastic running back, and we'll see him next year again. But as for this game, Hanley versus Thomasville, this one is going to be a good one tonight. And I expect good things from this game. And we are about 18 minutes from kickoff. We're going to take a two-minute break. You're listening to the Eagle Sports Network. When it comes to you and your family's health, you want the best care possible. Emerging Home Care, now known as EHC Pharmacy, your locally owned Healthmark Pharmacy, is here to help. The caring and knowledgeable staff at EHC takes the time to get to know their patients, understand their needs, and help them on a path to better health. They truly want to be a trusted health care resource for you and your family. Stop in and see why so many people choose EHC Pharmacy. EHC in the 3D Shopping Center in Lorno, caring for you and about you. That's Healthmark, and EHC's drive through is now open. Randolph County Best Brands Plus, located at 17 Main Street in Wedowie, not only sells refrigerators, dishwashers, stoves, washing machines, dryers, mattresses, and recliners, Randolph County Best Brands Plus services all appliances, whether you bought them at Best Brands Plus or not. Brad and his staff are certified to take care of electrical, plumbing, or appliance repairs. Call Randolph County Best Brands Plus for any of your appliance, electrical, or plumbing needs today at 256-357-0400. Emergency Medical Transport is proud to be part of this community and to serve the people of Roanoke, Randolph County, and surrounding areas. Emergency Medical Transport, owned and operated by night, has six ambulances in their transport fleet and 28 full and part-time EMTs advanced EMTs and paramedics to ensure that if you need emergency services, they'll be there when you need them. When you or your loved one needs professional emergency medical services quickly, you can rely on EMT, emergency medical transport, serving Roanoke and surrounding areas. Holly Norton here with Norton Florin. As many people know, we have been selling Orc vacuums for years. We also use them and occasionally abuse them. We've left them in the rain, caught them on fire, run them for hours at a time, and sucked up stuff they were never going to, and they keep going and going. But when they break, they are easily repaired with affordable parts. That's because Orc uses a simple design that makes them light, powerful, durable, affordable to buy, and inexpensive to maintain. And if you buy from Norton's, you only have to bring it here for servicing. Orc vacuums in Norton's flooring in Wedale, Alabama. 35 You're listening to Area High School Football on WELR 102.3 FM, Roanoke Range. And welcome back to Thomasville High School here on the campus of Thomasville. We're getting ready for Thomasville versus Hanley tonight. Big quarterfinal matchup. Another big quarterfinal matchup in Class 3A is RCHS versus Ohatchee. RCHS going up to the Creek Bank tonight, going to try to get the win. They played Ohatchee earlier in the season, lost to them 35-7. to But, folks, let me tell you, this is a totally different RCHS team than they were so many weeks ago. I think that was week two in the season. They are so different from what they were. They brought a new defensive coordinator in from Lineville, and he's been doing a fantastic job. And Coach Prestridge has it going on in Weedowie, and I saw Brody Wortham at Hanley a few days ago, and he's ready to go. Yeah, I do agree with you, Kyle. This team, this Randolph County football team is so much different than it was when they played Ohatchee. When they played Ohatchee, they turned the ball over, if I'm not mistaken, four times. And since then, they've only turned the ball over in seven football games. No, excuse me, in nine football games. They've only turned the ball over four times since then. So in one game to nine games, that's that's pretty pretty quick turnaround, you know, and hopefully – that um, they won't, you know, continue to turn the ball over against uh, Ohatchee tonight so that they can, you know, cap- so Ohatchee can't capitalize on those turnovers like they did to beat them so bad like they did the first time. Yeah, that's one thing you can have when you're playing a really great team. You've got to hold on to the football and stay ahead of the sticks. That's so important when you're playing a game against, you know, a really good ball team and, That'll go for this same game here tonight. Hanley has to stay ahead of the sticks and keep driving and pounding on Thomasville. Hanley's only visited Thomasville one time. That was in 2007. Yes, I know it seems like everything in this 
this season of playoffs has revolved around 2007, albeit with Wadley and Sweetwater and how that went and Hanley UMS and also Hanley Thomasville. Everything's going like 2007, but Hanley here to rewrite the books tonight. They lost in 2007. It was a, it was a pretty big loss, and they had a really good team that year. Ladarius Phillips was the running back. Darius Finley played quarterback. A very good Hanley team. And this year, Hanley hoping to rewrite the record books and get a win against Thomasville and go one and one. And I think they have the they have the formula to do it tonight. Yeah, I do agree, Kyle. And someone else, uh, someone to mix in with that formula to make this a, a win for Hanley tonight is, as we've mentioned before very many times on the radio, number five, Spanky Watts. He will be Hanley's main runner tonight. And I got a chance to look at their defense. Their defense is really good in the passing game. They have a lot of talent in the in in the secondary and also their linebackers are very talented and they have a few they have a few bright sides on uh the defensive line but they're not as successful as they are in the secondary. So I can see um Coach Strain trying to just load it up running old fashioned like he always does and just running up the middle with Spanky Watts, maybe running outside just a little bit a few times with someone like uh, Malik Meadows or Jay Brown or Christian Allen maybe. But most of the time I'm going to look to see Coach Strain running up the middle with Spanky Watts, and he will gain over 100 yards tonight like he has in many games this season. Many games except for last week. UMS keyed on Spanky Watts last week, and he was not able to eclipse. I don't think he was able to eclipse 50 last week, but they had keyed on him so much. But a guy like Spanky Watts, one of the best running backs in Class 4A, you can only hope to contain him. You can't hope to stop him because you won't. You won't stop him. You only have to contain him. And that's what Thomasville is going to try to do. But Spanky is fired up and ready to go, and I think he'll have a good game tonight, and I hope he does. And Red Fetner, the quarterback, the senior leadership coming through all around this team. I think it's 26 seniors, and all of them have significant playing time. So much senior leadership on this team, and that plays a big role into a deep playoff run and how far you can go because having those older guys that know what it feels like to go that deep and know what it takes to get the win is very important to your program. Yeah, I do agree with you, Kyle. You have several like spotlight seniors, people like Darius Joyner. He's the starting free safety wide receiver. Malik Meadows, I mentioned him. He's a wide receiver and defensive back. Um, Sherrod Curry, he's he's another big name to call on the defensive side of the football field. Um, Joshua Hatcher, he's another big win, and I see him to be one of the you know the key players to key in on tonight because he, as we've seen, that line, uh, fullbacks don't get a lot of credit when they run through the holes blocking those linebackers like they do. But Joshua Hatcher has caught my eye in a few games, and he's done an excellent job, and I hope to see him do great like he has been doing when we have watched him play. Yeah, and you talked about impact players from Hanley High School. What about from Thomasville? What's the impact players we're going to see tonight from Thomasville? You know, definitely number five, and I'll let you elaborate on that. Yeah, uh, number five, Zach Woodard. He is a tight end slash linebacker. He plays defense. His first position is linebacker, so I think he'll be a key linebacker for this team. But also playing tight end at 6'2", 225 pounds. And talking about senior leadership, a 12th grader is number five, Woodard, and so I can see a lot of leadership coming from him. Uh, I saw a few catches on him, and he's just kind of that kind of guy that's going to line up in the on the hash mark, and he's just going to run a seam down the field, and he's got that kind of high point kind of catch. He's that high point kind of catch person, and he's going to go up and catch the football at the high point. And that's one thing that, you know, number one, Darius Joyner and uh, Sherrod Curry and uh, Malik Meadows are going to have to worry about because, you know, he's that kind of person that's going to – hit you in the weak spot and another person that is going to be a def like a definite good thing for Thomasville is a uh, Chad Bryant he's the starting quarterback he's 5'11 180 pounds and he's also a senior uh Chad Bryant um he's the kind of quarterback you would see kind of like Des Dak Prescott when he played at Mississippi State he had the ability to run the football and he was kind of built to run the football like a like a running back, but he could also throw the ball. He has a cannon of an arm. I've seen him on a few passes to chunk the ball 45 yards down the field. And 
We're going to pause for the national anthem and the prayer. We'll take a two-minute break. You're listening to the Eagle Sports Network. The Rackensburg, 431 on the Randolph-Chambers County line is a proud supporter of area high school football. Visit Rodney, Benji, Nick, and Goober for a great selection. They have food for all your animals, and they're offering a great special on delivery of bulk feed. With the current hay shortage, they're taking orders on nice, clean peanut hay. You'll enjoy shopping and doing business with my friends at the Rack and Spur, located on Highway 431 on the Randolph-Chambers County line. Open six days a week. Phone 334-863-7771. H&M Drug believes in convenience for their customers, and they have changed their hours to make it more convenient for you. The new hours are 8.30 to 6.30 Monday through Friday and 8.30 to 12 on Saturday. More convenient hours and faster service to save you time and money. Remember, their new hours are 8.30 to 6.30 Monday through Friday and 8.30 to 12 on Saturday. Call your prescription in by phone and use our drive-in window. H&M Drug, Highway 431 in Weedowie. You've heard it said, it's all about you. Well, Bank of Weedowie's new unique checking account is truly all about you. There's no monthly minimum balance service charge. You choose your rewards, either cash back on debit card purchases or higher interest on your balance. Plus, you enjoy ATM fee refunds. Qualifying is simple. Come by Bank of Weedowie today for complete details. Bank of Weedowie's unique checking puts money back in your pocket. What if we told you that in two years or even less, you can be working in one of eight high-demand technical fields, making great wages, buying new wheels, finding a home, vacationing, and providing a great future for your family? Now, what if we told you that you can get this training right here at Southern Union in day or evening classes? Call 334-745-6437, extension 5316, to find out more. Classes start soon, so call today. Career training pays off fast. You're listening to Area High School Football on WELR 102.3 FM, Roanoke Grange.
we're here at Thomasville High School tonight, home of the Thomasville Tigers. Hanley looking to drop the hammer on Thomasville. Thomasville looking to continue their tradition of winning. Three minutes left until kickoff. Who's going to win tonight, Thomasville Tigers or the Hanley Tigers? You'll have to stick with us to find out. We're going to take a two-minute break. You're listening to the Eagle Sports Network. the spirit of the community, just visit a local high school game on an autumn Friday night. That spirit drives us to support our players or band members that make high school football something special. At First State Bank, we know the thing of the community spirit because it sits at the very foundation of all that we do. First State Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender in Lineville, Wadawi, and Ashland. What does Mike Fields really do? Does he fix fenders and hoods? Does he straighten frames? Does he paint things? Does he work with insurance companies? What does Mike Fields' body shop really do? Well, they do all those things. But what they really do is take a wreck and turn it back into the car that I love to drive, the car that I like to get behind the wheel and just drive and drive. Thank you, Mike Fields' body shop, for doing what you do, because you do it right at Mike Fields' body shop, 123 Industrial Drive, Rono. Trailer Retirement Community, a community consisting of over 55 years of experience in senior services. A community with a nursing home rated one of the best in 2014 in Alabama by U.S. News and World Report. The Inn at TRC, East Alabama and West Georgia's premier rehab center, offering rehabilitation care, post-hospital care, and transitional care. TRC's Williamsburg Manor 1 and 2 provide assisted living and memory care and Williamsburg Garden Apartments providing independent living. Visit Trailer Retirement Community today or call 334-863-3500. Trailer Retirement Community, a community of caring. Buying a home is your dream and sometimes it can be a scary thought. Wolf and Cloud and Credit Union can help by offering fixed rate mortgages with 15 and 30 year fixed rates. Wolf McClellan and Credit Union has never sold a mortgage. You get your mortgage locally and serviced locally by Fort McClellan Credit Union representatives. Log on to FortMcClellanCU.org for more information on rates and a mortgage calculator. Fort McClellan Credit Union, equal housing lender, NTUA insured up to $250,000. you are listening to Area High School Football on WELR 102.3 FM, Roanoke Grange. Welcome back to Thomasville High School Tiger Stadium for the home of the, the Thomasville Tigers. Hanley and Thomasville lining up their captains tonight. The captains for Hanley, number one, Darius Joyner, number four, Hudson Burns, and number 54, Justin Higgins. We're waiting for Thomasville to come out. And also Christian Allen comes out there a little bit later. But we're waiting for Thomasville to bring their team out. And here come the Thomasville Tigers. Thomasville dressed in all maroon here tonight. Maroon jerseys, maroon pants, silver stripes on the left and right side of the jerseys. A maroon helmet with a silver T on either side. Hanley dressed in all white, white jerseys, red cardinal numerals, and white pants. And the cardinal helmets with a white stripe down the middle and the player's uniform number in white on either side. So here come the Thomasville captains. Captains for Thomasville tonight. Number 73, Malik Salisbury. Looks like number two, Bryant Chadwick, the quarterback. Number five, Zacchaeus Woodard. And that's guys we have mentioned already. And number three, Jalen Pate, who's also a senior on this team. And right now we're going to send it down to our friend Eric Velasquez for the coin toss. What's up, Kyle? You sound a little different. Yeah, a little bit under the weather here this week. I've been <laughs> nursing a sickness all week long. Had to tough it out to get here tonight, but glad to be here. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, the reason I call you gentlemen is because that, that's just exactly what we expect you will be tonight. And we know that gentlemen always play with sportsmanship and class. Is everyone up for sportsmanship and class tonight? Yes, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. As captains of your team, we would ask that you encourage your teammates to play with sportsmanship and class. Can you do that? Thank you, gentlemen. White, you're the visitor. You're going to call the toss. Uh, before I toss it, I have a head and a tail. 
head and a tail. What are you going to call? Two. Tails is the call. If I drop it, I'll flip it again. It is a tail. You have won the toss. Would you like to defer to the second half? Defer. Yes. Hanley wins the toss. They decide to defer to the second half. Thank you, Eric. Just like that, the Hanley Tigers win the toss and decide to defer. Hopefully, they'll win the toss and also win the ball game. We'll see how that goes. We're getting ready for kickoff. And I was kind of looking at Thomasville's players and looking at number two, Chadwick Bryan. He kind of looks like Jalen Hurts from Alabama. He's 5'11", 180. Not as tall as Jalen, but he, he looks really, really similar. Hopefully, he doesn't play as well as Jalen Hurts. But it's going to be tough sledding for either Tiger team because these are two very potent teams. And once you get to the quarterfinals, everyone you play is going to be a challenge. Yeah, I do agree, Kyle. When it, when you get this far in the playoffs, it's just it's just basically eight. There's eight teams left in 4A football, and they're the best eight teams in 4A football. And if they weren't, you know, they wouldn't be there. So you know, it's a tough matchup and. I'm just curious of what Coach Strain has not has given these boys to get them ready for this pregame, for the, give them a pregame speech to get ready for this football game. And here come the Hanley Tigers. They were out of their run through. And you hear the train horn, and hopefully we'll be hearing that a lot tonight, much to our chagrin. But hopefully we'll be hearing that a lot tonight. Let's get it. Let's we, get it, man. We hope for a lot of Hanley scores. Eric's fired up. Eric, a Hanley alumnus, 2011 state champion in Class 3A. And here come the Thomasville Tigers locked arm in arm, walking behind their mascot, walking toward their huge fan base over here. But both sides well represented tonight. We are in for a good one. Yeah, I do agree, Kyle. These Both of these teams look very ready for this football game, and both teams are very – they look to be very into the game. Their heads are in the right places, and it's going to be a good football game tonight. So you heard earlier, Hanley decided to pick tails on the coin toss. Hanley won the coin toss, so they'll defer. So that means Chadwick Bryant, the quarterback for Thomasville, will get the ball to start the ball game. And we'll see this Hanley defense, who held a very tough UMS right team to only 14 points last week. And UMS Wright, a team that Thomasville played as they are in the same region. Thomasville beat them 42-30. to 30. That game was here in Thomasville, by the way. And it was pretty close to the fourth quarter, and Thomasville just decided to kind of run away with it. So definitely a very good team in Thomasville. We'll see what Coach Strain has up his sleeve. But I know if, any, if I know any certain certainties in the world, Coach Strain is going to have a really good speech for those guys because he makes some of the best pregame speeches that you will ever hear in your life. Yeah, I do agree, Kyle. Uh, I never got to play in in any of his uh, heart-filling uh, speeches, but I was on the sitting on the sideline for most of them, and it's just a, it's just just it just gets you ready to go out there and knock somebody on the ground. You know, you get ready to win a football game, and that's exactly what he wants to do is he just wants to get into your heart and let you know that he cares about you just as much as he cares about this football team and how much they win. Yeah, he gets his players to want to run through a brick wall for him, and the fan base kind of gets the same way too. So here comes Hudson Burns getting ready to kick off for Hanley, back deep to receive for Thomasville, number 11, Ja'Cory Lee. And here's the kick. It'll go to Lee. Lee receives on 13. He's going to try to run it up the middle of the field. He's at the 20, 25, cuts left, gets taken down at the 29-yard line. That's where the Thomasville Tigers will set up first and ten. Yeah, Kyle, and you like, like I said, like you said right there, Jaco Jacory Lee, excuse me, uh, he's an eleventh grader and he's not very tall, but I've seen him in a few athletic film plays, and he's something to watch out for with his dangerous speed. Eagle one hundred two three would like to thank Roanoke RMC Urgent Care for sponsoring the Player of the Week. <clears throat> Last week, Tyree Shepard, our Player of the Week after getting 200 yards against a very tough Sweetwater team, the Sweetwater team that plays Maplesville tonight in Sweetwater, best of luck to them. So here comes Thomasville on offense. Quarterback is going to be number 14, Corrigan Thibodeau. Looks like we're going to have a timeout Thomasville before the first snap of the game. How about that? Well, that just tells you uh, how mind jumbled these Thomasville Tigers are tonight, Kyle. And it uh, looks like the coach down there, uh, Jack Hank, uh, Hankins, he doesn't look very happy with his football team. 
Yeah, and anytime you call a timeout before the first play of the ball game, that's something you don't see very often, and that's kind of like a waste of a timeout. You had so much time to prep and to get ready, but going into the first play, sometimes you just still can't get it right. Yeah, Kyle. And um, with only seven minutes taken off the clock and that seven minutes coming from the kickoff, you know, uh, there's no telling what he's got off his sleeve right here. He could have something that could do. he could do something with. And number 14, Thibodeau coming back out at the quarterback position. Here comes Thomasville lining up in the shotgun formation. Number six, Tay Washington, the running back, lined up to the left side. They'll bring a man in motion across the middle. Hand off to Washington over the right side. He tries to cut back up into the middle of the line, but Bart Boyd is there to stop him after a two-yard gain. Yeah, Kyle. And um, it looks like right now uh, the starting quarterback for the Thomasville Tigers is not number two, Chadwood Bryant. It looks like number 14. I'm not sure how he – Thibodeau. Corrigan Thibodeau. Corrigan Thibodeau. Uh, is, it looks like he's the one that's going to be getting the quarterback start tonight for Thomasville. And he's a sophomore, five foot eight, 175 pounds, definitely the shorter of the two QBs. He's lined up in the shotgun. Two receivers to either side. His running back, Tay Washington, off to his right side. He throws a pass. It's tipped up in the air by Christian Allen, and it falls incomplete. Good defense on a curl route right there from Christian Allen, and it's third and seven. Yeah, and that's just the way you want to start off this ball game right now if you're the Hanley defense, and it was a great uh, – uh, pass breakup by number eight, Christian Allen, and hopefully we'll see a lot more of that tonight from the Hanley defense. A good man-to-man -man defense right there from Christian Allen. Allen will drop down and line up off the defensive end here. Shotgun formation once again, three wide receivers left, a single receiver to the right. Thibodeau drops back to pass, throws, and it's tipped away by Joshua Hatcher. It hit him on the fingers. I thought he had a pick six for a minute, but it just kind of tipped away. Either way, it's fourth and eight. Thomasville is going to set up to punt now. Yeah, and that, to me it looked like it was an interception. It may have just slipped through his fingers a little bit too high, but golly, I got my hopes up right there, Kyle. You and me both, brother. And back deep to receive for Hanley, number two, Malik Meadows. A very good player from Hanley as well. Back to punt, William Powell for Thomasville. Here's a snap. The snap is a little bit low. He picks it back up, kicks it end over end. It's going to take a hop at the 38-yard line and it'll take a Thomasville roll all the way down to the 33-yard line. So Hanley will set up first and 10 from their own 33. Rhett Fettner and the Tiger offense set to get going here. Yeah, Kyle, I'm excited to see what Coach Strain has to do with his offensive play and calling right now. Uh, we got to see Rhett warming up a little bit, tossing the pigskin around, and he looked very consistent with his throws with the spiral and uh, bullet throws coming from the ace pitcher that signed for Auburn, if I'm not mistaken, uh, two weeks ago. That's right. Last, last week he signed with Auburn University as a pitcher. He's in shotgun formation, two receivers on either side. Takes a snap, hands it off to Watts. Watts over the right side. Watts has a hole. He's 45-50. 45, 40, 35, gets knocked out of bounds at the Thomasville 33-yard line. First down, Hanley Tigers. What a play by number five, Spanky Watts. And like I said, Kyle, he just kind of did what he did. He used all that lightning in a bottle that he has and got up the sideline for a great first down. And a big first down. It looks like they're marking it at the Hanley 45. They're saying he stepped out of bounds at the Hanley 45, which – that's on the far side of the field, so we can't see it as well. But it's first and ten, Hanley from their own 45. Rhett in the shotgun. Two receivers to either side. Spanky Watts anchors Rhett off of his right hip. He'll get the handoff up the middle. Nothing doing on this play. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage and gets a gain of maybe one. Yeah, Kyle, and that, that's one of those players that I talked about right there. Number number 29, uh, Quita Watkins. Uh, he's an outside linebacker for the Thomasville Tigers, and he's made several, several key tackles that were good for uh, the Thomasville defense. And I saw a few plays when he played against UMS Wright, and he kind of shut them down with his plays. Hanley in a single back set. Rhett drops back to pass, rolling out to his right side, looking for someone downfield. He kind of dumps it down to number 22, Dre Watkins, for a gain of seven, make it third and two. Just a little, a little curl route from Dre Watkins. He runs five yards toward the end zone and turns around and sits down in the hole in the defense and waited for Rhett to throw that ball to him. And he was in wide open spaces, and Rhett hit him for a good pickup of about seven. It'll be third 
and three now for Hanley. Shotgun formation, three receivers to the left side. Spanky Watts, the running back off of Fetner's right hip. Here's a snap to hand off to Watts over the left side. Watts trying to outrun number five. He gets taken down. That's big number five. Zacchaeus Woodard takes him down short of the first down, and it's fourth down Hanley. Yeah, Kyle, that's not what Hanley needs right now. Uh, it was a little outrun right there, and you just saw number five coming from his linebacker position and kind of hawking him down from behind a little bit right there. But uh, it didn't look to, to me like Spanky Watts was running his full potential right there. He was kind of waiting on his blockers to set up and get ready there, but he didn't have enough time to wait for that as Woodard was right there for him. Fetner lining up to punt here on fourth down for Hanley. Hanley playing field position here early in the ballgame. Here's a snap to Fetner, a good snap, and what a punt. This punt goes down to about the five, and it's caught at the seven-yard line. First and ten, Thomasville on their own seven. Now, if I'm the guy from Thomasville, number 13, Tremaine Norwood, I wouldn't have tried to catch that. I'd let that roll into the end zone because you get the ball on the 20, and that would definitely have rolled into the end zone with oh. as much front forward spin as it had on the ball. Oh, yeah, Kyle. That was one of uh, – Red Fetner's kind of punts that, you know, went high, but it wasn't his potential high. And those punts, you know, they have that potential to roll back towards Hanley, but that one was going straight into the end zone, Kyle. Thibodeau in the shotgun, two receivers left, a single receiver to the right. He takes a snap, dropping back, looking over the middle, throws it over the right side. Malik Meadows in coverage, and it's incomplete. Number 21 for Thomasville, Rashad Mosley. Almost had it, and he would have had six if he'd have had it. Yeah, but right there, that's just another great example of how fast Malik Meadows can come back from being burnt and patting down a batting down a pass. Excuse me, and that was a great play by him diving out to bat that ball away to make sure it wasn't six. Thibodeau in the shotgun once again, second and ten. Changes to the pistol now. Two receivers left, a single receiver to the right. He gets the snap, try to run it up the middle, and big number 16's there. For Hanley, Tyrese Hurd clogs up the hole in the middle, and it'll be third and ten. Yeah, and don't forget number 51, uh, Trey Drake, and number 17, Joshua Hatcher, as they were there to make sure that he did come down with number 16, Tyrese Hurd. Thibodeau lining up in the shotgun on third and ten now. He'll have two receivers left, a single receiver to the right. His running back off of his right hip, number Number 11, and there is a flag before the snap. Let's see if the call is on Hanley or Thomasville. Dead ball offsides on the defense. So that will make it third and five. Hanley kind of shooting himself in the foot on that play. It will be third and five now for Thibodeau and the Tiger offense. Yeah, and that's just one thing that the – the Hanley Tiger defense doesn't really need right now is any any penalties to go the negative way against them. And they had a great position on that third and ten, but let's see how this Tiger offense does. Thibodeau in the shotgun, dropping back, looking left, throws it left, is caught for a first down by Thomasville. Number four, William Powell, the punter, gets in there and makes the grab for Thomasville first down. And instead of third and ten, it was third and five, so they ran a five-yard out route. The receiver ran five yards north and then cut toward cut toward the out-of-bounds line and was a, a good throw from Thibodeau, and it was right on the money for a Tiger first down, Thomasville Tigers, that is. Thibodeau will be in the shotgun here. Two receivers left, a single receiver to the right. His running back, Ja'Cory Lee, off of his right side. They'll bring a man in motion to the right side. Here's a snap. Thibodeau dropping back, looking right, throws long, and it's caught. Number one. Braylon Washington for another Thomasville first down, and that, my friend, was a beautiful throw. Yeah, that was a great throw, and it was uh, perfect timing as they brought number one, uh, Braylon Washington, across from the other side, and he kind of ran like a – looked to me like it was going to be a wheel route, but he kind of stuck his foot right there at about the 38-yard line and made a great catch. Pistol formation for Thibodeau. He'll look back to the sideline to get some direction from – his quarterback coach. He'll have two receivers left, a single receiver to the right side. His running back, Ja'Cory Lee. And he'll hand it off to Lee. Lee runs into two guys, and that's big number 16 once again, and also Trey Drake, the same two he ran into last time. Yeah, right now, Kyle, it uh, doesn't look like there's much going for the running game for Thomasville, so they're going to have to stick to the air for their first downs. Uh, 
for right now. I don't see them running the ball up the middle against Hanley because you can look at the beef up front and you can tell Thomasville's, Thomasville's kind of outweighed and outnumbered here. Shotgun formation, Thibodeau looks left, throws on a slant route, and it is dropped by number 21, maybe. They say he caught it, so that's a gain of five, make it third and five now. It looked like he had dropped it. He bobbled it, but he turned toward the opposite sideline, so the only person that had a better vantage point than we did was our friend Eric Velasquez. I'm not sure if he caught that one or not, but it looked like he bobbled it. But it's anyways, third and five, five minutes left in the first quarter. We're tied at zero. This is Thomasville's second drive of the ball game. Shotgun formation for Thibodeau. Two receivers right, a single receiver to the left. Thibodeau drops back, looks right, throws over the middle, and it is overthrown. He tried to get a Washington, and he he tried to – it's kind of like pitching. He tried to place it instead of just throwing it. And if you try to place the ball, you're usually not going to hit your target. You just got to throw it. But he was trying to be too fancy there. And it's incomplete, and it'll be fourth down and five for Thomasville now. Yeah, Kyle, uh, deep breath taken by Hanley and everyone in the Hanley fan section because if he would have if he would have caught that, it would have been a first down. And here comes the punt from number four, Powell. Powell way up in the air. Not a, full, not a long punt, but a high one. And it'll bounce back. It'll take a Hanley roll and roll dead at the 35-yard line. So Hanley will get the ball at their own 35. Five minutes, 25 seconds left in the first quarter. We haven't had any stoppages of play in the first quarter. Hanley gets the ball back. Fettner come out at quarterback on offense. Let's see what they line up. They ran a lot of shotgun last drive. We'll see if they try to pound the ball here. And they will. They'll line up in the wishbone set. Spanky Watts, the deep back. Fettner under center, takes a snap, hands it to Watts over the right side. Watts bounces outside. He gets to the 40, almost to the 45. He's to the 43-yard line. It'll be second and short now. Watts fighting for all his yardage, yards after contact. Yak, he got about five there, yards after contact, because he drug two Thomasville Tigers with him. Yeah, Kyle, and in that little wishbone formation you were talking about, you know, you have those kids like number 22, uh, Trey Drake, and number 17, Joshua Hatcher, leading the way, and I'm not one of the, that wants to be on the defensive side of getting that lick. Pistol formation for Fetner takes a snap, hands it off, to fakes the handoff to Watts, throws it to a wide-open Joshua Hatcher, but he overthrew it to Joshua Hatcher. Beautiful play call from the Hanley offensive coordinator and and hit head coach Larry Strain, excuse me. Fender took the snap, faked the handoff to Spanky Watts, rolled out to the left side, had Hatcher coming on an out route, and there was nobody in front of him. He had – it looked like he had six to me. Yeah, it was a great play call by Larry Strain. It just looked like number 12, Red Fender, got out in front of himself and got a little bit too anxious and just kind of threw the ball a few feet out in front of his receiver. It's kind of a misfire there. Wing T formation here for Hanley. Here's the snap. Fender will hand it off to Watts in the middle, and he gets swallowed up in the backfield. He'll get a gain of one, but that's not going to be enough for a first down. It's going to be fourth and two. Fourth and a long one, short two. We'll see what Coach Strain wants to do here. I'm thinking he wants to punt. 4.19 left in the first quarter. We're still tied at zero. If you're just joining us, Hanley won the toss, decided to defer. So Thomasville got the ball first. Both teams have had two possessions so far in this ball game, and no one has reached pay dirt yet. Fentner back to punt for Hanley on this fourth down. Here's a snap and the punt. This one a high spiraling punt, and it'll bounce and roll inside the 15. It kind of tight ropes the sideline and goes out at the 13-yard line. So Hanley playing field position very well right now. Yeah, and that was a great job um, by Rhett Fenton right there, uh, punting the ball inside the 15, and that's two punts as he's had inside of the 20-yard line. That's a great job by him punting the football. And here, here comes Thomasville, first and 10, 3.50 left in the first quarter, tied 0-0. Thibodeau coming out in the shotgun. Two receivers to the right side. No receivers left. He'll have a tight end to the right side as well. Here's a quick toss over the right side. Taking down in the backfield. 
Number 17, Joshua Hatcher all over that one in the backfield. Beautiful play by the linebacker, Hatcher. And like I said, Kyle, number 17, he's that kind of kid that I like to keep my eye on, and he's made a great play and a great appearance right now, Kyle, as he's made a, a few tackles tonight in this football game. And here comes Thibodeau and the Thomasville Tiger offense pistol formation here. Two receivers right, also a tight end to the right. Thibodeau drops back, looking that way, throws it, and this one's over everybody's head, but there's a flag in the backfield. That's going to be on number 16, Tyrese Hurd, as he hit the quarterback after he threw it. Yeah, Kyle, and that's exactly another thing that this defense doesn't need right now is that kind of penalty that's going to get them the first down and a new fresh set of downs for the Thomasville Tigers. And like that, it would have been third third and 12, and now it's first down and 10 from the Thomasville 26 yard line, excuse me. Third and 12, inside your own 20. I mean, that's, that's huge. Yes, I do Thomasville agree. in the pistol here. Two receivers left, also a tight end that way. Number 11, the running back, Ja'Cory Lee. Actually, number 10, Quiz Osborne. And they'll hand it off to him over the right side. He runs into Trey Drake and Josh Hatcher. He's going nowhere. He'll lose two yards, make it second and 12. And does that look, does that ring, does that play right there ring a bell, Kyle? They've run that play multiple times and it hasn't worked yet. Yeah, and uh, hopefully um, the head coach will read that now that he has, he has lost yards on both times he's ran the football like that. Line up, same formation here. Thibodeau looking left to throw it, and it is tipped down by Tyrese Hurd. He almost had an interception there. Yeah, the ball kind of hit his hand and rolled down his forearm, and it kind of went to his belly, and he kind of scooped it. And here comes Thibodeau on third down and about 12. Thibodeau lining up in the pistol. Three receivers left, a single receiver to the right side. His running back, number 11, Ja'Cory Lee. So now third and 12, 231 left in the first quarter. Thibodeau takes the snap, hands it off up the middle, and he runs it to Trey Drake, and Trey Drake takes him down. He ran through Dre Watkins, but he slowed him down just enough where Trey Drake could get there, and it'll now be fourth down for Thomasville. Yeah, and that was uh, Ramal T T Taylor. Excuse me, sorry. That was from a distance looking. But uh, he almost broke one right there if it wasn't for Trey Drake right there. He might have gotten the first down. Yeah, Ramal Taylor, number 22, was the deep back there. Number four on the punt. This one goes spiraling toward Malik Meadows. It bounces. Malik Meadows fumbles it. And I'm not sure if he fell back on it. Yeah, Kyle, and you saw right there that the ball had already bounced and he tried to field it in front of him with only his fingertips, and it didn't go good. And Hanley got it back, luckily for them. Malik, you know, just trying to make a play right there, trying to make something happen, but just didn't work out right there. So first down and 10 for Hanley, 152 left in the first quarter. This, this game going by pretty quick here. Fetner. He's going to line up here in the I formation. Spanky Watts, the deep back. Joshua Hatcher, the fullback. Two receivers to the left side, Christian Allen and Malik Meadows. Fetner under center. Fetner takes a snap, tosses it to Watts over the left side. Watts looking for blockers. Tries to cut it back, runs over a man. Gets hit from behind and taken down after a gain of about four. And that was a hard-fought four there. We got some Tigers. Some Hanley Tigers getting up slow on that one. This Malik Meadows and Jay Brown getting up a little slow after that play. Yeah, right there, Kyle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it looked like there was some good blocking by Jay Brown right there. He just kind of got ran into by a, a leading back for Spanky Watts. Wing teeth set for Hanley. The fullback, Malik Meadows. The two wingbacks, Jerry Watkins and Spanky Watts. They'll bring Watts in motion over the right side. Hand it to him. He's looking for the edge. He's got it. He's at the 40, 45, down to the 48-yard line. First down, Hanley. Yeah, and that was a great play call right there by Larry Strain as it got them to move the sticks, and it almost puts him in Thomasville territory. And 
just another uh, beat for the Hanley offense to, you know, make this team successful. I was looking for a block in the back. It looked like Dre Watkins had got a block in the back there, but none called, so no harm, no foul. Fentner in the pistol now. Watts the deep back. Two receivers left, a single receiver to the right. They'll bring Darius Joyner in motion. Here's the snap. Fentner rolling out to the left side, looking for somebody to throw it to. No one there. Fentner decides to run it himself. He's to the 45. Steps out of bounds at the 43. Clock stops with 33.2 seconds left in the first quarter. We're still tied at zero here. Hanley's third possession. Fetner gets six on first down. It'll be second and four now. Yeah, both teams have had three possessions. Kyle and uh, Thomasville was not successful in either three of those possessions. Hopefully, the Hanley's third possession, which is the one that we're live with right now, will be a little different. Hanley and Thomasville territory here. Shotgun formation. Fender has two receivers right. He'll hand it off to Watts over the right side. Watts gets through a hole to the 40, 35, down at the 35-yard line for another Hanley Tiger first down. Yeah, Kyle, that was just a great run uh, by Spanky Watts right there as he shook a few defenders and was able to get loose and do what he needed to do to get the first down. 20 seconds left in the first quarter, still tied at zero. Fender coming out in the shotgun. Two receivers to either side. Spanky Watts, his running back, off of his left hip. Fender will bring a man in motion, takes a snap. He'll hand it off to Spanky over the right side. Spanky's got a hole. Stiff arms a man down inside the 30 to the 27, and that's the end of the first quarter. Your score is 0-0, zero zero, Hanley driving. We'll take a two-minute break. You're listening to the Eagle Sports Network. What if we told you that in two years or even less, you can be working in one of the high-demand technical fields, making great wages, buying new meals, finding a home, vacationing, and providing a great future for your family? Now, we told you that you can get this training right here at Southern Union in Dairy Union classes. Call 334-745-6437, extension 5316, and out more. Classes start soon, so call today. Career training pays off fast. $200,000 middle mid 225 you get them at 225 you able to buy them at 225 I'm Ron Young with Southern Auction Solutions. The auction method is the best way to obtain top dollar quickly for your assets. Contact us today and let us turn your assets into cash. 23 Main Street with Allen, 256-357-9600, southernauctionsolutions.com, southernauctionsolutions.com. So find us on Facebook, sold them to you. Royal Oak Case Home Center, located on Highway 431. Royal Oak is your one-stop shop for handymen and contractors. Manager Jason Pike and his professional staff will be glad to assist you. You'll find everything you need. Plumbing supplies, electrical supplies, a complete line of wood and lumber, and this is their incredible paint department. For all your indoor and outdoor projects, Royal Oak Case Home Center has everything you need. Shop local, shop Royal Oak Case Home Center. They're open six days a week. Royal Oak Case Home Center, Highway 431, Royal Oak. The spirit of competition, you see it all over town. People taking pride and giving it their best at Small Town Bank. They're happy to be there for you every day, making your life better and making your community stronger. All striving to be the best with four convenient full-service locations. In the Valley, Warnock, Heffel, and Random. All open six days a week and two loan production locations in Oxford, Alabama and Carrollton, Georgia. Small Town Bank is there when you need them the most, helping you develop and grow. That's the goal of Small Town Bank. Small Town Bank, an equal housing lender and member of FDIC. You're listening to Area High School Football on WELR 102.3 FM, Royal Oak Grange. Welcome back to Thomasville High School, home of the Thomasville Tigers. Hanley now with third and two. They'll be in the strong Power eye formation. Spanky Watts, the deep back. Fetner under center. Joshua Hatcher and Dre Watkins, the two fullbacks. Here's the snap to Fetner. The handoff to Watts. Watts cuts it up the middle. And he has a Hanley Tiger first down inside the 25. Yeah, right there, Kyle. That was just a kind of power back run, you know, just kind of something simple that Larry Strain usually runs with his powerful, strong, really, really big uh, – fullbacks that he kind of leads away for Spanky Watts and got that first down for the Hanley Tigers. For just joining us, start of the second quarter, 0-0. Zero zero. Hanley driving 
They're now at the Thomasville 25. They'll be in the I formation here. Fentner under center, Joshua Hatcher, the fullback. Spanky Watts, the deep back. A single receiver to either side. Fender takes a snap. He fakes the toss. Looking over the middle, he throws behind the intended receiver. That's his hot target. Number 10, Jay Brown falls behind him, and that one's incomplete. It'll be second and 10 now. I like the play call. You've run it all the way down the field, and you just try to play action fake here and try to get it to your number one target. Yeah, Kyle, I do agree with his play calling. He kind of tricked him at first, and then it just the play took too long to draw out, and they really didn't realize what was happening. So the ball came a little late of where he was throwing it. Power I set, handoff over the right side to Watts. Watts cuts back, tries to get by a man. He dives inside the 18, and that's going to be third and four now for Hanley. It's a big, big third down situation. For the Hanley Tigers, they're inside the 20 to the 19-yard line looking for a Hanley Tiger first down. Yeah, and right now, Kyle, if it comes down to it and they're not able to convert it, this is one of those kind of times where you're going to have to call number four onto the field to put those points on the board. Yeah, and as you said, he was two for two for two last week, not including the PAT. Here comes Fender in the eye formation. Spanky Watts the deep back. And... Looks like there's a timeout on the play. Let's see who it's called. Timeout, Hanley. We'll take a one-minute break with them. You're listening to the Eagle Sports Network. Chad Norton here with Norton Smoke. As most people know, we have been selling orc vacuums for years, but we also use them and occasionally abuse them. We left them in the rain, caught them on fire, run them for hours at a time, and sucked up stuff they were never designed to, and they keep going and going. But when they break... They are easily repaired with affordable parts. That's because Oric uses a simple design that makes them light, powerful, durable, affordable to buy, and inexpensive to maintain. And if you buy from Norton's, you only have to bring it here for servicing. Oric vacuums in Norton's flooring in Wedowie, Alabama, 357-33. Randolph County, Best Brands Plus, located at 17 Main Street in Wedowie, not only sells refrigerators, dishwasher, stoves, washing machines, dryers, mattresses, and recliners, Randolph County Best Brands Plus services all appliances, whether you bought them at Best Brands Plus or not. Brad and his staff are certified to take care of electrical, plumbing, or appliance repairs. Call Randolph County Best Brands Plus for any of your appliance, electrical, or plumbing needs today at 256-357-0400. You're listening to Area High School Football on WERR 102.3 FM, Roanoke Grange. Big third down, Fender rolling out to the right side, throws it over the middle, and it is caught at the five-yard line. Yeah, First you, down, Hanley. Yeah, you see the ref coming up right there, and he was completely saying that, that he was able to get that ball and uh, bring it in for catching a first down. What a great play by Jay Brown. And we haven't seen much much consistency coming from Rhett Fender in the passing game so far, but uh, – Good job by his receivers going out and uh, stretching out and catching the football. Power eye set. Spanky Watts the deep back. Two fullbacks, Hatcher and Dre Watkins. Here's a snap to Fender. He'll toss it over the right side to Watts. Watts looking for the edge. He's at the five. He gets hit at the five-yard line, taken down at the three. So second and goal now from the Thomasville three for Hanley. Number six. Tay Washington on the tackle, the touchdown saving tackle. So now second and goal for Hanley. Nine minutes left in the second quarter. Still tied at zero. Hanley looking to draw first blood. Power eye formation. Spanky Watts to the deep back. Fentner under center. They bring Watkins in motion. Fentner takes a snap and it's fumbled. Picked up by Spanky Watts. Watts looking for the edge and he is in. Touchdown, Tigers. The snap was fumbled between Fetner and the center. Watts made a smart play picking the ball up and then decided to take it out to the outside. He got the edge, and he got the Hanley Tiger touchdown. And, Kyle, honestly, that was really, like, kind of weird 
uh, how the sequence of events, it looked like Rhett dived on the ball, but the ball shouldn't have been where he dived on it, where Spanky Watts picked it up. I'm curious to whether or not. Water bucket formation here. Hanley going for two. They give it to Malik Meadows, and he has it. Hanley eight, Thomasville zero with 8.38 left in the second quarter. We'll take a one-minute break. You're listening to the Eagle Sports Network. You and your family's health, you want the best care possible. Emerging Home Care, now known as EHC Pharmacy, your locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy is here to help. The caring and knowledgeable staff at EHC takes the time to get to know the patients, understand their needs, and help them on a path to better health. They truly want to be a trusted health care resource for you and your family. Stop in and see why so many people choose EHC Pharmacy. EHC in the 3D Shopping Center in Laurel, caring for you and about you. That's Health Mart. And EHC's drive is now open. Emergency Medical Transport is proud to be part of this community and to serve the people of Roanoke, Randolph County, and surrounding areas. Emergency Medical Transport, owned and operated by Beth Knight, have six ambulances in their transport fleet and 28 full and part-time EMTs, advanced EMTs, and paramedics to ensure that if you need emergency services, they'll be there when you need them. When you or your loved one needs professional emergency medical services quickly, you can rely on EMT. Emergency Medical Transport, serving Roanoke and surrounding areas. You're listening to Area High School Football on WELR 102.3 FM, Roanoke Grange. The kickoff from Hudson Burns down to the nine-yard line where it's received by Thomasville. Thomasville player taking it out to the 25, looking to juke past the Hanley man. He won't do it. Cuts back to the other side of the field. And Darius Joyner over there trying to get him, and he's taken down inside his own 20-yard line. And he, t- ran, he ran 40 yards east to west to get – about a nine-yard return. And honestly, Kyle, that kind of seemed like to me it was just – it was wasted point because he got further in his initial running than he did coming back and looping it back around the far side of the field. The thing there for him was he couldn't get around Hanley's number 14. Yeah, he couldn't get around Hanley's number 14, Cardarius Burton. He couldn't get around him. He tried to shake him, but Burton stayed solid and – he wouldn't let the man by, so he decides to cut it back. There's a flag on the kickoff. That will be marked off to the Thomasville 10. So first and 10, Thomasville from there on 10. And that's not what Thomasville needs right now as Hanley's up by score of 8 to nothing right now. It's a good way to go up right now. Hanley Tigers looking really good here tonight early. 8 to nothing, Hanley, 8.23 left in the first half. Coach Strain. Coach Strain's game plan has gone quite well in the first half. Of course, we're early, and we're in Thomasville, but Hanley looking good so far. So here comes Thomasville. They'll line up new quarterback, Chadwick Bryant, to bring in big number two. He'll take the snap, looking left, throws it, and it's intercepted. Jay Brown, pick six, touchdown, Hanley. He tried a slant route. Jay Brown sat down on it, and Bryant threw it right to Jay Brown, and he didn't drop it. Jay Brown took it 10 yards, and just like that, it's 14 zip Hanley. And that was just that was just excellent by number 10, Jay Brown. And that's just the kind of thing that this energy needs from the defense to be transferred from the energy of the defense, like I said to the offensive energy and kind of get this spark going for this Hanley football team. The man coverage on that play, fantastic. Hudson Burns lining up for the PAT. The kick is up, and it is good. So with 8.16 left in the first half, Hanley 15, Thomasville 0. 